I'm Ghost Hunter Extraordinaire of the Wisconsin Files. And sometimes I look. So as, as a paranormal investigator, I some people sometimes people ask me, "Hey, are UFOs for real?" And I say, "I'm not sure." We we let's let's talk about it and let's go see if if we can hear about some real evidence from Wisconsin about UFOs. Let's go find out. UFOs, or what are now being referred to as unidentified aerial phenomena. So we've seen a dramatic influx in the amount of sightings with video evidence. And I think that's probably partly due to the progression of technology. Now everybody is capable of carrying a small device in their pocket and they can take videos with that at any given moment. So Wisconsin ranks fairly, maybe not like crazy high, but we're up there on the list of the amount of UFO sightings that we have every year. I mean, we have three UFO capitals that are fighting for the title of UFO capital of the world, for crying out loud. It's also said that UFO sightings tend to correlate with large bodies of water or just bodies of water in general. But then again, I also hear about a lot of like desert sightings and whatnot too, obviously Roswell, things like that. So I guess that's just really up for debate. Wisconsin's first reported UFO sighting took place in La Crosse in 1897, and this was described as a cigar-shaped object that was just hovering in the sky. Now at this time, people were very familiar with what hot air balloons were, zeppelins, things like that. I think even at this point, the Wright brothers and their predecessors were already taking to the skies with their inventions. So people knew about these certain types of flying machines. And this particular machine was something they'd never seen before. And this also would coincide with the wave of sightings of UFOs across the United States or even the world between 1896 and 1897. Some of those would be explained away, such as the La Crosse sighting as just being a Zeppelin or something to that effect. I think as far as man has walked this earth, they've been fascinated by whatever lies beyond that skyline. I mean, even Leonardo da Vinci was writing out blueprints of his own ideas on how to fly. It gets harder and harder to try to deduce what exactly is a hoax and what's legitimate, but I still think that there's a large number of very credible witnesses and sightings. There's so many that I'm making a very long series on this. I feel like the more I investigated it, the more I found. UFOs and just aliens, I think are just really fascinating. And especially at this point in time, we are in a revolution of our own technology once again, where we're just getting more and more advanced. So while I was doing a bunch of research on these UFO sightings in Wisconsin, I stumbled across the Wisconsin UFO page where it was just filled with so many sightings and descriptions of exactly what people saw, when they saw it, and where they saw it. And I feel like the months of like August and July, those seem to be like really like peak months for sightings for some reason. I don't know if it's the warm weather, but there seems to be a large number of these sightings in Wisconsin that happened during like the summer, you know, summer, midsummer months very strange. With the government now releasing so many classified documents coming out and confirming things. That, I remember all those memes going around saying like, you know, government uh, confirms aliens exist, the public, we don't care. And I don't think that it's that we didn't care. It's more or less that we already had the open mind. We already assumed that there was something else going on out there. So when they came out and told us, it just wasn't the shock that I think they thought you know, we were gonna, the reaction that we had wasn't the one they thought we were going to have. And I also find it very curious how many sightings are from law enforcement or, you know, just doctors and very credible people. 
even entire towns, cities were seeing these objects in the sky. It has to make you wonder. You know, it, it just, it triggers something in my mind going like, wow, could it really be mass hysteria every single time? The amount of cities and towns that have come together and said they saw what they saw had photographic evidence, such as I believe it was Colfax, Wisconsin, and from Elmwood to Belleville, the cities Dundee that are fighting to be the UFO capital of the world, they've had mass sightings where so many people, and not even just in their own city, but other cities on the exact same times or weeks or even days, they were seeing the exact same things. And it has to make you wonder just what exactly is going on. On November 23rd, 1953, in an area called the Sulox, Air Force ground control spotted an aircraft flying in restricted space. Calling to the nearest base in Madison, Wisconsin, First Lieutenant Felix Manka and Second Lieutenant Robert Wilson took off in an F-89C Scorpion to try and identify what was on the radar. The area to where the men flew was on the border of Canada and Michigan, surrounded by Lake Superior and Lake Michigan. The weather was said to be stormy but stable enough for flying. The two pilots were also very capable and had hundreds of hours of flying experience under their belts. Having made their way up north, the men were unable to keep sight of this anomaly on their radar. It would erratically change direction. Ground control would eventually lead the men to the object. Catching up over Lake Superior, it was there this unidentified craft would once more change course and head directly over the Scorpion. It was then all communication failed and ground control stated they completely vanished as did the UFO. Search and rescue was immediately dispatched, but no trace of the jet or the two pilots were ever found. The wreckage would occasionally be searched for, with every investigation turning up nothing. In 2006, a group called the Great Lakes Diving Company would claim that they discovered the F-89, along with an unknown metallic object, believed to be a piece of the UFO. However, these alleged accounts couldn't be substantiated. Not one photo or shred of evidence could be given to corroborate the story. Even stranger was the fact that no one in the diving profession or other well-known divers in the entire Great Lakes region had ever heard of such a company. Even more bizarre is not long after those claims were made public, the website and anything related to the Great Lakes Diving Company were essentially scrubbed from the internet, leading conspiracy theorists to believe the government created the company or even took the evidence from the company and removed the entirety of everything they had found. Either way, it was certainly odd. The Air Force would give many different explanations as to what exactly happened that day. At first, it was agreed the jet had completely vanished. Then the alleged cover-out story that the UFO was actually an aircraft belonging to the Canadian Royal Air Force, and that Moncla had confirmed this, and that he would subsequently crash due to the impending weather. Yet search and rescue would make it back safely. Canada would also deny they ever had any aircraft up during that time frame, and this only fanned the flames of the public's growing suspicion of the story. The ground control workers also said they believe whatever was in the sky that day was responsible for the two men's demise. Some say that the jet and the pilot were abducted and disappeared with the UFO. Others say that perhaps some high-tech extraterrestrial laser beam incinerated them. Whatever truly happened will probably never be known. Although the bodies of Felix Moncla and Robert Wilson were never found, they presumably perished that day over Lake Superior. In Moncla's hometown of Louisiana, the cemetery there erected a memorial in honor of his life. This is just one story like so many others that remain unsolved. And I appreciate everyone that watched all the way to the end. Your support means the world to me. Thank you all so much, and I'll catch you later. Mm -hmm.